Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi Hafadullah. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ar. Assalamu alaykum, Sheikhna. Assalamu alaykum. You look well, how are you? Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Sheikhna, over the last episodes, we've been discussing Khums. And one question that you know, came to mind was in regards to when you borrow money. Now, let's say an individual has purchased uh, a property and has taken out a mortgage. First of all, this person is probably paying interest on, on, on this borrowed money. So is that allowed? And secondly, the borrowed money is obviously in excess of his expenditure. Does he have to pay khums on that money as well? A'udhu billah as-sami'an alim min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad. Well, in the case of the essential needs of that individual, let's say that person is living in a rented property and he now needs to buy a property, he needs a bigger place, he needs to, play, to own a place. If that is counted as his essential, as his first uh, property, for example, in this case they can, they can take out money from the bank as a means of mortgage or borrowing money, that's fine. They can do so. And if they have put money as a deposit, let's say, for this property, and they have already paid hummus on this deposit, let's say 50,000 pounds, they paid already 10,000 as a hummus away, and they paid this 40,000 pounds as a hummus money in which was hummus and paid hummus. So in this case, whatever they pay in the future as a mortgage monthly, there is no uh, khums for it. So they paid the deposit, it's been khums, and now they own the property, they have the right as an essential need. Um, because the second property, let's say a buy to rent property or business property, that is uh, a different issue and different subject. So as a, as a, as a first property, that's fine. Uh, for this individual, there's no need to pay hummus anymore. So they continue paying the mortgage and uh, the property is theirs at the end. Shaykh, what about if I borrow money um, and I haven't touched it in a year, I haven't used it at all, it's in my possession, do I have to pay hummus on that? The money borrowed uh, from an individual or from bank or from people is one of the, I think, third exemptions because I've mentioned okay. initially inheritance mm -hmm. there's no homes on inheritance received and gained and your dowry as well dowry from the husband again there's no homes to pay yes. this is the third exemption that loans when you take out loans from the bank or from the individuals mm -hmm. or even a group of people there's no homes on the loans because this money does not belong to you you don't own it so you keep it until you have uh, fulfilled your need and then you give it back. There's no hummus on, on the loans. MashaAllah. Sheikhna, it's 2019. And MashaAllah, we have uh, youngsters who have uh, a lot of money in, in their savings and uh, maybe it's been gifted to them or passed down or even inherited. Now with these youngsters who are you know, below the age of Baluch, um, do are they eligible to pay hummus? And if not, who, does someone else have to pay khums on their behalf? As the men mentioned by the Sayyid that obligatory precaution, ihtiyat wujubi, that the one must pay khums on the child's belongings and property. And uh, the one who pays it, of course, is the guardian, be it the parents or the one who is fostering those ch uh, children or child. In this case, um, yes, uh, the one must pay the hummus. At the end of the day, um, they are under your guardianship and you're spending on them. And they get, let's say, money, gifts, and so forth, and they've never been used, let's say. Let's say the child is three and he gets a, um, a gift, um, 
let's say, a jacket. When he's five, he can wear it because the size is, is, is too big yes. for this child to wear it. So you keep it for two years. In this case, when the date arrives of the homes payment, you value this jacket, and then you pay the homes, and then that's it. It's funny that you mentioned that in regards to uh, the, the size of the jacket, because you, you were saying when a child has to grow up in to fit into the item of clothing. But what about the opposite way when we have clothing, let's say we have a five-month-year-old baby, and you know, we've purchased you know, different clothes for this five-year-old, and within a month, those clothes don't fit. Or let's say three months, the clothes don't fit anymore. What about on those items? Do we have to pay homes on those items? Well, again, um, because you haven't used them and you don't need them anymore, and the date arrives again for the homes payment, then of course you have to pay the homes. These are an excess surplus, although you don't need them anymore. Uh, there are two options with regards to such items if you don't need them anymore, even to do with the furniture or anything else. You can give them away to the charity, that's number one, or give them as a gift to other friends and colleagues or relatives as a gift. So to avoid paying homos if you want to avoid this payment for unwanted gifts or unused gifts or belongings, you just give them away as a gift, that's it. And then um, you don't have to pay any more homos yes. unless you kept them till the due date of the homos then they have to pay the homes, of course. MashaAllah, I think that's a lot easier, isn't it? Than actually, you know, running around the house trying to find everything, calculate, you know, uh, the value and then calculating your homes. Why not just give it to charity if, if you're not going to use it, MashaAllah. Sheikh, now, we live in the West and, you know, Alhamdulillah, we have, you know, certain social welfare systems in place to help us. So, for example, those who are not uh, employed or those who earn a certain amount of money, they, they get aided from the government uh, with, you know, some sort of... Um, credit or some sort of, of uh, allowance. Is homes applied to this allowance as well? Especially when it's not really, you can't really say it's adequate enough or it's not really a lot to, to help someone um, live comfortably. But let's say, you know, do we have to pay homes on, on, on such um, wealth? If anything is left over after the essential expenditures and spendings, you have the whole year to spend be it from your own efforts and work and employment income or governmental income for those who are in need, disabled, and so forth. Um, at the end of the year, if that uh, unused wealth or money is not spent, is not used uh, as a surplus, as an excess extra, then when the, the, the date of the homeless payment arrives, the due date, they have to pay the homeless on that excess and extra sum. Uh, whatever the situation, as I mentioned just earlier, that the child should also be paid. Mm -hmm. The homos for the unused gifts or clothing or even money. So this also applies to those people who get um, uh, welfare benefits or support from the government because of their situation, uh, having no job, for example, or illness, for example, disability. If that amount is remained and left over uh, by the due date of the Khumus, then they have to pay it, of course. Excellent. Sheikhna, this is quite a serious topic I'm going to go into now in this question. Is, you know, we were discussed it before, the importance of paying Khumus, and some people take it lightly. Now, does Khumus and not paying it actually have an effect on your deeds as a Muslim? For example, um, if I've not paid Khumus, on certain clothing, am I allowed to pray in those clothing? Let's say I haven't paid homes on certain money. Can I purchase food with that money and so forth? You see, if the one uh, in such situation pays the homes afterwards, then the salab will be valid, the prayer will be valid, the clothing will be valid. Uh, but they also need to seek the permission from the mujtahid and, and, and the scholar about uh, um, such acts, so they haven't paid homos, they've used or prayed with that clothing, mm -hmm. for example, which is uh, unchoms, let's say, uh, and, and they try to find out a way that if their prayers are accepted, if the food they ate was uh, uh, allowed, for example, 
So if they paid the hummus straight away afterwards, that's fine. The, the salah, the food will be all valid. But they also need to ask permission from the marja, so they would be in safe side. Okay. Now coming to a more fiqhi perspective on this topic, um, if one person, um, if one person, if a person hasn't paid khums on on a certain um, amount of money that he he owes, but he starts to purchase other items with this money. So let's say you know there was a thousand pound that he had to pay khums on, two hundred pound he had to give to khums, he didn't give it. But with, with that thousand pounds, he started purchasing clothes, and food, and, and, and uh, perfumes. Are those items all considered usurped? Or is it that um, you know, he has a spending limit and he has to save his khums on the side and pay that khums money? So these items are fine. Or is it until he pays the khums, these items are considered usurped? How, from a fiqhi perspective, what is that? How is it considered? As long as that specific money is due to be paid for the hummus the one isn't allowed and permitted to use that money okay. that money belongs to the imam uh, the sahm al-imam and sahm al-sadiq that money belongs to uh, the shara' now you're not allowed to use this money for any reason in any case and situation but you need to ask the permission from the marja' from the uh, the jurist that you follow with this regard and, and come with a settlement with him. Otherwise, we cannot. This money doesn't belong to us. We have to give it back to uh, those who are in need of it. As I've mentioned, the, the share of the Sayyid and the share of the Imam. Salam. So we have to ask the permission for the marja, whatever we do, or before we do these acts. And even if we did, did them, we have to still ask the permission from uh, the scholar. Sheikhna, what happens when there's an individual who doesn't pay khums and this person now is throwing a party or, or a wedding um, and invites us to attend? Are we allowed to accept the invitation? With this regard, you're allowed to accept the invitation of such, uh, let's say, weddings or parties or even if somebody invites, invites you in, in his own house. You can go there, you can eat, but when you have left the place, uh, you try to calculate the value of the, uh, of the food you have ate, uh, whatever you've used, for example, and you take out the hummus. So let's oh, say wow. you can see, let's say you can calculate, you know, this much meat and rice I ate, which is worth, let's say, five pounds. So you take out one pound, one fifth, yeah. as a hummus. So yes, yeah. you're allowed to go to these places, the parties, the weddings, the uh, invitations, that you show, pretty sure that they don't pay hummus. Okay. 100%. Uh, in this case, yes, as I mentioned, uh, when you have finished, you take out the hummus and you pay it separately. Mashallah, it's really interesting to how it's like, okay, you haven't paid the hummus, but you're eating food. Now you've technically eaten the hummus, so you now owe the hummus money to the imam. It's, it's quite fascinating, mashallah. Sheikhna, same on, on the same topic of an individual not paying khums. Um, what if that individual has, you know, children, a son and a daughter, and he pays for their expenses, you know, food and drink and, and so forth? The the son and daughter are they liable to pay khums? If their parents pay the khums, you know, then and of course, if they get their own income, let's say. Um, gifts or money coming in in the name of the child, of that specific child, then of course they have to have a, um, a yearly date specified to pay the hummus. So if they, ha if they have that date um, of the hummus payment, then when they pay the hummus, that's it. They don't have to uh, be worried about any hummus payment in the future unless they have for the next uh, coming year, uh, the, the new date, the next year. But if le let's say that parents, they don't pay the hummus, in this case, uh, the best thing is that they have to come with an agreement and settlement with the marja, with mm -hmm. this regard, because the, the father or the mother or the both parents, they are buying food and drink for their kids and they never pay hummus. 
So the kids are eating and drinking unchumst uh, food and drink. So the best thing is that they have to come with a settlement with the merger to clarify and uh, clear the situation of the khums payment. Ahsan Sheikhna. Sheikhna, in regards to paying khums, normally we pay it to the marja you, you follow, the marja you do taqlid of. Is a muqallif allowed to give it to another marja, or must he give it to the one he does taqlid of? Well, it is allowed to, um, to give the khums uh, to another marja, other than the one you follow with the provision that that second marja that you're giving the hummus to spends in the same uh, uh, direction and place as your marja spends on. So let's say if, the, if, the, if your marja spends them on the house and, and the establishment of Islamic centers and so forth, and the second one will do so the same thing, then that's fine. Otherwise, uh, you have to ask permission okay. from your own marja that can I give this to another marja who is, for example, building new schools and hospitals in a specific deprived place uh, or country, for example, mm. a poor country, and so forth. So uh, the best thing is to ask them the ijazah, uh, the permission, uh, before you use the hummus in ad any other uh, methods or spendings. That's the best thing. MashaAllah. It's nice to see that there's a lot of flexibility and that, you know, where it seems that all the maraja are unanimous together, you know, to do exactly. charitable work and, and for one cause, for the cause of Ahlul Bayt and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mashallah. Thank you very much, Sheikhna, for this discussion and inshallah, uh, we'll have another episode of Ihqam SOS. Thank you for viewing and we'll see you soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.